Okay, I've washed my hands and gathered my supplies. My supplies will be a bath blanket, six washcloths, two towels, and a linen bag. And this skill is for female parent care with catheter care. I washed my hands and gathered my supplies. Knock, knock. Come in. Hi there, Mrs. Jones. How are you? Oh, I'm just great. Well, I'm Linda, and I'm your CNA, and I've come to uh, provide parent care for you and also take care of that catheter. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, that's fine. How are you over there, Mrs. Smith? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, that's wonderful. I'll be over there to uh, see about you as soon as I am done with Mrs. Jones. Oh, okay, that'll be great. All right, Mrs. Jones, before I even get started, before I touch your equipment or you, I want to make sure that I wash my hands. So, wash my hands. Excuse us for a moment, Mrs. Smith, as I provide privacy, total privacy, making sure no one can see. But for our purposes, I'll have to leave some of the curtain open so you can see what I'm doing. Raise this rail up because I know I'm going to be having her roll over to the side and check my brakes. Remember, side rails at the state test is optional. It's just a way of you addressing safety. Mrs. Jones, is it okay if I move the personal items out of the way? Oh, sure, no problem. All right, and I also need to go in your drawer to get your basin and your soap. Okay. Now I'll be right back. I'm going to get you some water, okay? Sure. Okay, so I'll get a paper towel to lay here. Oh, sorry. Paper towel to uh, turn on the faucet. Temperature has to be 105 degrees. Oh, that's perfect. Making sure I do not set the basin inside of the sink because of the bacteria that's found in this entire bathroom, including the sink. I don't want to carry bacteria from the sink to the bedside, so I have to hold it. So, be careful, turn off the faucet. Okay. All right, Mrs. Jones, could you please check the temperature of the water? Oh, that is great. Yes, I always have them check it before I set the basin down so I don't forget to have them to check the temperature. Um, do it first so I don't have to raise and lower the bed again um, if I wait later to do that. All right, Mrs. Jones, you're going to just raise your bed up to a comfortable working height. So how have you been? I mean, you just fine. Well, that is great. You just look really good. Yes, yes. What kind of plans do you have for today? A bingo tournament today. Oh, bingo. That's right. I heard that you were uh, the queen of bingo. Yes, I am. And I saw the wonderful prizes they have for you guys. Well, that's exciting. All right, after I come off the controls, this is uh, sanitize my hands yet again. All right, Mrs. Jones, we're just going to pull down this top blanket to get it out of the way so we don't get it all wet. Making sure it's not dragging the floor. There. Next, you want to apply the bath blanket because it keeps you warm and it also provides privacy. Bath blankets are made out of cotton, so they absorb water better than a sheet. As I said, it keeps them warm. All right, Mr. Jones, can you hold on to this top bath blanket for me? As I pull down your top sheet. Sure, no problem. Okay. All right, Mrs. Jones. There we go. Now, I'm ready to get started. So, again, I know we just sanitized our, my hands, but we're going to do it again to always remember the principle of sanitizing your hands before you put gloves on. Now we have to be very, very careful with this catheter. We do not want to pull it out. So a couple of ways that you can do this. When you roll Mrs. Jones over, you can just anchor this catheter like this against her leg, making sure you're not uh, pushing down too um, hard. We don't want to cause skin breakdown. So that's a way. Or you can just make sure that this drainage bag is empty first, 
Make sure all the urine is emptied out of this, and then you can just lay it down here on, 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 on the bed with the resident. You never want old, dirty urine to backflow into their bladder, which could uh, cause a urinary tract infection. So either just say, you know, you've emptied out the urinary drainage bag, or just hold on to it, and this is the technique that I'm going to use as you roll them over. So Mrs. Jones, can you scoot toward me, please? We always have a resident do as much for themselves as possible, especially when you're testing at the state. So you don't have to go through the whole process of getting someone to help you roll her over. So I'm going to anchor this down onto her leg, like so, and I'm using my pad to roll her over. Now she's right, make sure this doesn't drop on the floor. Oops, there. Mrs. Jones, I'm sorry that you not have your arm amputated. I know, that diabetes. Okay. Put the leg out in front, being very careful. There. There, Mrs. Jones. Let's lay down your barrier to protect your pads so we don't get it all wet. There. You can roll back now. Sure. All right, Mrs. Okay, now we only want to expose only that which is necessary. So I like my students to just expose just a little bit of the thigh that's closest to the student. Making sure that the uh, gown is out of the way here on the pad as you can see. I don't know if you guys can see. Maybe zoom it in. There's no, there's no, um, gown there and we're keeping the gown well out of the way. All right, now we are ready to get started using just a little bit of soap. We are going to start by cleaning the vaginal area first. For female pericare with catheter care you always want to clean the vaginal area first. All right, now we're going to spread open the, in, the inner lips of the vagina, the inner labia, with our hand. And then we have to keep it here all throughout the cleaning process. If it closes back on itself again before you've had a chance to clean both sides of the labia, that means you have to start all over again. And they are emphasizing this at the state. All right, so with my index finger, I'm going to go down the center, starting way up here. Then I'll have to pause so I don't pull down on that catheter and continue down the center. Switching fingers, side furthest away from me. Again, being very careful that we do not pull on the catheter. Hmm. A finger closest to me, start way up here, pause, and then pick up again to do the side closest to me. Now, if I were to clean this catheter like this, just pull down like so, you are so at risk for pulling out the catheter. So I want to repeat this one more time. Again, go down the center, pause, let me do it again. Go down the center, pause, and then pick up to continue down the center so we don't tug on the catheter. Switching fingers, the inner labia, the side furthest away. Switching fingers, the inner labia, the side closest to me. You always clean inner labia, then clean the outer labia. Now I can move my hands, now that I've finished cleaning the inner labia, I can move my hands so I can flip my towel to clean the outer labia. So my hands were here, now my hands go up here. Again, going down center, top, pause so I don't pull on the catheter, continuing down the center, switch fingers, the side furthest away from me, getting in the grooves of the outer labia, switch fingers, the side closest to me, pausing again to make sure I don't pull on that catheter, and then continuing with the side closest to me. So that was washing the inner labia and the outer labia. Now I will rinse. All right, same exact steps. It's like a three stroke procedure. Going down the center with my index finger, pausing, picking up, and continuing down the center. Switching fingers, the side furthest away from me, the inner labia furthest away from me. 
Switch fingers, the side closest to me. Pause, picking up, and continuing down the side that's closest to me. Flipping my towel. Moving my hands here now. Going down the center. Pause, continuing on the center. Switch fingers, the side furthest away from me. Down in the creases. And then, last but not least, another finger, side closest to me. Pausing. Picking up again so we don't pull on the catheter. So that was washing and rinsing the inner and the outer labia. Now I'm going to clean the catheter. And how I clean the catheter is to totally encircle the catheter with my index and third finger. So I make a mitt, I mean a V in my mitt so that it looks like this. But when I totally encircle that catheter, then all sides are going to get cleaned at the same time, if you can see with my finger. So with the hand again that's closest to the resident's head, I'm going to just kind of keep my hands here and go gently around the opening for one last time. Come down just a little bit and then hold on to the catheter and proceed at least four inches down that catheter or until clean. So that was washing rinsing the exact same thing. I like the V method because I don't have to worry about not covering or not cleaning all sides. So again, starting with just rinsing around the opening again, come down just a little bit and then use my other hand to hold on to this catheter to prevent tugging it and rinsing at least four inches or until it's rinsed. And then we clean, we pat dry. We pat dry the catheter. You don't want anything that we wash and rinse, you always want to pat dry. Pat dry the vaginal area. All right, so we're done with that. Take off my gloves, sanitize my hands, put on another pair of gloves. to roll Mrs. Jones over to do her buttocks in her anal area. All right, Mrs. Jones, come toward me, please. So, comes towards me, and that arm up, using my pad, roll her over, making sure, oops, making sure that her head stays on that pillow. Sure, we don't pull out the catheter. There. She's in the center of the bed, so we're attending to safety. All right, Mrs. Jones, we're ready to do your buttocks. Cleaning the buttocks, flipping the towel to do the perineum, that space between the, the uh, opening, the, the uh, vaginal area and the anus, front to back. We have washed, now rinse. Rinsing. And patting dry. Okay, Mrs. Jones, let's remove this barrier. Take off my gloves. Sanitize my hands. Again, in some situations, this is not going to be possible. So, sanitize your hands as soon as you get the opportunity. All right, roll back over, Mrs. Jones. Put your arm down. Make sure your gown is not wrapped around your neck. Pulling this down, and again, as I said, we want to make sure if you need to, put gloves on even to do this. But you have to make sure you take the gloves off again just before you come into contact with her equipment, so her bed. So the last thing that we have to make sure of is to make sure that there are no dependent loops in this catheter tubing. So this is a dependent loop. When the loop is hanging down like this, 
when the loop is hanging down like this, not allowing the urine to drain freely into the urinary drainage bag, that's considered a dependent loop. So we want to coil it up on the bed, like so, so that it drains, drains directly. This is a coil, and that, so that it drains directly down into the urinary drainage bag. We never want the tubing to be up underneath the resident's body because this will be a source of pressure that can lead to skin breakdown. It's always here to the side, coiled on the bed. All right, Mrs. Jones. And if you're testing out the state, you have to make sure you check that it is not. Anytime you're dealing with a catheter, you always have to make sure that it doesn't have any dependent loops. All right, Mrs. Jones, hold on to this top sheet as I pull down your bath blanket. And bring up there. So are you comfortable, Mrs. Jones? Oh, yes. I feel great. Okay. Well, that is awesome. There. Let's see here. Make sure your linen is nice and neat. There. There. Make sure it's all going in one direction so it's not too long on one side, dragging the floor, and then contaminating your bed, your bed linen. All right, so let's lower your bed. Make sure the brakes are still on. And then we'll clean your equipment and we'll be done. So exciting. And I can get down there to that bingo tournament. Yeah. You want something good, okay? Something that you can give to your grandchildren. Oh, I certainly will. Lower it all the way down until it stops. I'm just gonna go ahead and lower that side rail. I could also do this when I get ready to open up the curtain. So that's another option. All right, Mrs. Jones, I'm going to put on some clean gloves. So sanitize my hands to follow the principle that we always sanitize or wash our hands before we put gloves on. And then I'll be right back. I'm going into the bathroom to clean your basin. Enter into the bathroom and then empty the dirty water into the toilet. Being very careful not to splash the toilet water into the basin. If you pour the water toward the front of the toilet, then you will avoid that. There's a clean paper towel. We'll turn on the faucet. And then we're cleaning our basin. Just going to rinse it out one more time. And then wash. with the dirty sink. We don't want to carry any germs back to Mrs. Jones' bedside. Make sure we dry. Again, it's a three-part process. Wash, rinse, and dry. Put this on barrier. Lay a barrier down. So I can set my basin on the barrier so we don't recontaminate. Wash my hands, but for my purposes, I'm going to disinfect or sanitize. So I'm washing my hands, okay? Clean paper towel, turn off the faucet. Wash my toilet. And return that to the bedside. Okay, Mrs. Jones. I am. Any equipment, I'm just going to put your things away. 
to tidy up. Is there anything else that I can do for you? Oh no, no. I am just so comfortable. Well, I'm glad. I want you to feel good. Get ready to win some good prizes. All right, so that's that. Have everything there. Open up your privacy curtains. Mrs. Smith, is there anything that I can do for you? Oh, no, I'm just fine. Okay. Just in case, make sure I check the brakes last time. They're good. Sanitize my hands. Well, if there's nothing else that I can do for you guys, then I'll see you in two hours when I do my rounds. Pick up my bag.